These model snow signals continue to build from the northeast US back down to the south and Gulf Coast for the next several days. This video has all of the latest data right here in the next 10 minutes. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to tune into this video. I want to start you off with an overview of the two main snow signals that we're going to be watching, and you can see those low pressure systems on the screen with this custom graphic I've made. This is your snow zones graphic from January 18th through 22nd, showing where the best chance for snow will be possible, and then where the snow is more likely to even heavy at times being expected in the United States. And you can see area number one that we're going to be watching is going to be with the low pressure out of Sunday into Monday that I'm about to talk about. That's going to bring the chance for nor'easter-like conditions with gusty wind and heavy snow fall. In some cases, we could get over a half a foot of snowfall in this zone I'm circling with this initial storm, pushing out of parts of the mid-Atlantic into southern New England, and then even on up there into some parts of the interior northeast. Then from there, this is the big attention grabber for a lot of folks because of how unusual this is. Our next low pressure is likely going to come right here down through the south central United States and possibly ride that I-10 corridor or along the Gulf Coast, bringing the chance for either ice indicated by these pinks where there could at least be some ice or sleet possible, as well as some snow in this general vicinity going through all the Gulf Coast and Southeast states all the way to the Carolinas, and then we could even see this try to turn into another nor'easter as it goes towards the mid-Atlantic shorelines. Lots to talk about, and I want to start that breakdown here first with a look at that snowstorm that's going to impact the Northeast. Make sure you're using those timestamps right below in the description of this video, as well as along the bottom timeline if you want to skip ahead to our southern snow signal, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. But here we go. Let's talk about that nor'easter that's going to impact parts of the mid-Atlantic and Northeast as we go through the next couple of days here, pushing out of our Saturday where we're going to have a little bit of snow with the general cold front into parts of the interior northeast and into our Sunday. That's when this low pressure is likely to kick up. You can see it already down here into parts of West Virginia, particularly the West Virginia mountains are going to get some of this heaviest snow, but a couple of inches likely in surrounding spots, even out of eastern Kentucky with the beginning of our new low that's going to ride the back end of this front. Again, this is beginning into your Sunday morning, so things could begin to start falling in terms of snowfall, even over towards Baltimore and D.C. as we get into the late morning hours, even up there towards Pittsburgh, a brief graze of snow. But this storm is going to quickly, like nor'easters like to do, try to dodge its way on over here and make its way towards the coast. And that means that we're going to get some pretty heavy snow, even up the I-95 corridor and in some of these populated areas. By the time we go through the middle of the afternoon, Washington, D.C., up to Baltimore, over to Philly, to Trenton into parts of New York City, all these places from Maryland up into Delaware, into New Jersey, into parts of southern New York, and including Long Island, looking like we're going to be seeing some pretty heavy snow breaking out for a quick period of time, at least here through the afternoon of our Sunday. We'll already be seeing light snow picking up through a lot of east central New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and then down into parts of Massachusetts and Connecticut by this point in time. And then from here, look at how quickly this moves northeast. By the time we go from 4 to 7 p.m., we're seeing snow leaving the mid-Atlantic, now really focused on southern New England, where it's going to be a tight line as you go out towards Cape Cod from snow turning over to rain. But most areas, even along the coast in a place like Boston, down to Providence, Rhode Island, back to Hartford, Connecticut, looking like it's going to be heavy snow for you here. And then the storm will wrap up into the middle of the night, Sunday night, and into early Monday, where we could get several hours of heavy snow into a place like Maine as well before this event is all said and done. With that overview for these systems, locations, and the track and the timing for it now in the books, let's go ahead and give you a look at the latest forecast snowfall guidance here from the National Digital Forecast Database. We'll move up the chain with these snowfall amounts, starting back down here at the southwest part of the track that's going to come as we go out of Friday night and into our Saturday morning and early afternoon. Here out of Kentucky into West Virginia, parts of Northern Virginia, and into Maryland. Looking at a big swath here in these deeper blues of at least a few inches of snow and many spots pushing it towards four, five, six. We'll get upwards of six inches of snow and closer to 10 in some spots there in the east central higher elevations there of West Virginia and places like Elkins and up to Kingwood. That could even push into parts of far southwestern PA in those elevations on the southeast side of Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh proper only anticipating a couple of inches. As we push on over here to the east in places like Baltimore back down towards Washington, D.C., a few inches of snow may be a little bit higher if this track shifts just a little bit east, but for now it looks like just on the north side of those areas and then as we push up to the north side of the Philly metro area, that's where some of our heavier snowfall totals are really going to get going. This purple shade through east central PA and north central parts of New Jersey indicating up around 6 to 10 inches of snow, maybe even some isolated pockets of 12 inches of snow here. That could include Scranton PA, New York City looking at about 3 to 6 inches of snow if this forecast holds. Up to Hartford, Connecticut, though, you're in that 6 to 10 inch swath. Same goes with Albany, New York. And then as we push through a lot, at least the inland two-thirds here of Massachusetts, including Worcester, back to Amherst, 6 to 10 inches of snow with locally higher amounts there. 
Vermont, New Hampshire, same thing. As you push towards the coast from Boston back down to Providence, looking at about three to six inches for you, but I think we could get closer to that six inch mark for sure. And then looking at about six inches plus of snow through a lot of Maine, and it could be closer to six to 10 inches as you go there to the east central parts of the state. All right, that's enough jibber-jabber about the northeast U.S. Let's pivot back down towards the south central, the Gulf Coast regions in the southeast, where our next winter storm is going to be. It's still very surreal as a person who lives in South Carolina to say that the snow stripe is going to be this far south. But here we are as we go from Monday through Wednesday. That's what we're going to have to watch. And let's go ahead and play things out. This is an overview, not a final forecast. Just giving you a general look at where things could be and when with the GFS model. Overall, I think this is pretty set in stone. This is the most likely part of the forecast, given that it's only a few days away now. Coming out of East Central Texas into parts of Southern and Central Louisiana, pretty good chance that we see some form or fashion of ice, sleet, or snow. It could even be heavier at times as we pick up out of Monday night and into our Tuesday morning. I think especially as the sun starts to rise, this is when this is going to pick up and then start moving eastward. I think if you're in West Texas, not much of a chance of heavy precipitation out of this, but as you start from San Antonio up to Austin, Colleen, maybe the south side of Dallas as well, and then eastbound, that's where we're going to see this storm start to pick up. And we could definitely even see wintry weather as far south as the Gulf Coast. Is it going to look exactly like this? I'd almost guarantee it doesn't. But Houston over to New Orleans, we could at least see a wintry mix at the minimum, maybe even heavier snowfall if this shifts a little further south through the day on Tuesday. At the same time, we could also see this system shift a little bit further north. We could see heavier snow a little further north here out of central into northern Louisiana, up through central and northern parts of Mississippi, central and northern Alabama. There's still time for little shifts, but I can tell you there's going to be some form or fashion of wintry weather all through this Gulf Coast and south central region and the lower Mississippi Valley as we go through Tuesday. And then by, by the time we go out of late Tuesday and then into the night, Tuesday night and into Wednesday, looks like whatever is going on with this is going to push east. Possibly some snow trying to get in parts of the Florida Panhandle, but a better chance up into southern Alabama at least, into parts of Georgia, the Carolinas again, and somewhere in these states, we're going to be looking at heavy snow. And the confidence is rising that it could be towards east, central, and the southern parts of these states closer towards the coast. And then from there, as quickly as this is here, we're drying out overnight as we go through the early part of Wednesday. Although if we continue to see the signal rise, we could maybe even see some heavier snow if we try to see this turn into a nor'easter in parts of the mid-Atlantic. That's something I'll monitor and give you more details on as we get closer. The GFS model does a great job overviewing the setup and generally the timing of that system, but I want to use these European ensembles of more than 50 different outputs coming together into this blended guidance. This does the best job of showing the probabilities of certain amounts of snow. In this case, since we're still a few days out from this and there's some model discrepancies, let's just start with the chance of one inch of snowfall, and that's what I'm going to break down in this video. Look at this, as you come out of eastern Texas into southern and central Louisiana, including places like Baton Rouge over to New Orleans, that's where that highest chance stripe is indicated and the orange is turning to that maroon shade for a 70 to at least a 90% chance of an inch of snow. So when you get this kind of blend in guidance showing that big of a signal, pretty much anticipate about an inch of snow or more, probably more in some of these areas. But could we see some more snow a little bit further north? There's at least a 10 to 20 to 30 percent chance all the way on up there to northern Louisiana and southern Arkansas for some heavier snow there. That's a trend we're going to have to continue to track. Either way, through southern and central parts of Mississippi, through south central Alabama, looking at about a 50 to a 75 percent chance of at least an inch of snow as we go through Tuesday. Same goes even up here into the northern Florida panhandle through southern and central Georgia. One thing I will say about these ensembles coming through Georgia into the Carolinas, that's definitely a little bit more of a northerly track or at least an inclusive track of areas with a 50 plus percent chance of an inch of snow. Just giving you a look at this ensemble that ran yesterday, you can see the difference. It was a lot closer towards the coast. We've seen a little bit more of a shift to where more areas other than the coast, maybe even further in, could get at least an inch of snow. A trend we're going to have to watch, and we'll see if we continue to see this general blended guidance shift the storm north. That's why the forecast is definitely not set in stone for anyone, though. The reason that southern snow is so far south is because it's too dry with the Arctic blast that's being ushered in across the U.S. Um, or for the next snow to be anywhere further north. So again, snow number one, several inches for the northeast as we recap that. We'll see many spots getting six plus inches there through parts of especially the mid-Atlantic and then moving up into southern New England. That could be very close to major metro areas. And then snow number two, of course, that I talked about in this video and gave the latest data on was with the possibility of big snow and ice totals for the Gulf and southeast. East. I covered all of this, especially the cold temperatures as well, more in detail in yesterday's video, so make sure you're checking the link in the description for that. 
and checking the link down in the description of this video to access the free trial for the awesome weather model maps that I use from Weatherbell. I know I'm giving you a lot of things to check out, but one thing that's really simple and easy to do if you have not already is hit that subscribe button to me right here on YouTube. I'm on the verge of getting towards 10,000 subscribers. I'd love to do it by February, and you can help me out by hitting that button down below. Stay tuned for more hype-free forecasts, and I'll see you next time at... One Nation Weather.